Household with the Catholic background. I went to Catholic colleges. Um, sort of didn't really believe in God. I was sort of believed in a, you know, believed in the understanding of evolution and, and such things. Went through some pretty harrowing experiences in life. Uh, well, pretty, pretty, pretty horrible experiences in life when I was younger. More eye-opening actually. And travelled around. Was in the army for a while. Didn't agree with the Gulf with the first uh, invasion of Kuwait. So anyway, they didn't really gel with me being in the army. So I went, ended up leaving and went on a, a journey around the world. And um, in, in doing so, I, uh, I, I first went over the world, because I was actually interested in hip hop for some reason. I liked the rebellious, rebelliousness of it and it's 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 a counterculture attitude and i went to uh new york city and well when, when i was over there i was at a hip-hop club and there was some people throwing crackers and we thought that they were gunshots and so everyone left the the uh everyone ran out ran out of the the the, the, the building it was at the octagon everyone ran, ran out and there were some people who were running over people's heads and all sorts of things anyway when i Jamalski and he actually was a Jamaican and he was involved in um, reggae music and he took me to a um, a, a club in uh, the Lower East Side which uh, a DJ called Bobby Connors was was, was selecting and um, there I saw some um, uh, there I was impressed by the by the by a fist, a black fist, and a white fist across a big poster saying um, respect, and I was res I, I saw, a, I, I admired that, and I thought, well, that's a bit of a difference in what I was experiencing at the hip hop clubs, where generally I was the only uh, um, white boy in there. <laughs> so I ended up, uh, and coming from Australia, it was a new experience for me. So at this reggae club, it was a bit more harmonious, and I thought, well, I like the, you know, inviting everyone in, into it. And while I was there, I actually ended up, and, and one of the things I liked actually was I was into smoking at that time. Um, her, I was into smoking marijuana, and there was they were giving, they were passing marijuana around freely. So I smoked that, and then I thought, I'm at home. And from there, I actually started looking at the Rastafari religion. And because I liked their idea of one God, one aim, one destiny. I liked the idea of um, the, the, what, what appeared to be a non-racist non -racist attitude. Um, and, also appear, and what I also liked was, was the fact that they were pretty free in their life and they're into this one love. Now as I went through life, I started looking further into the, there was a few things though, as I, I went, I was fully into that. I became a selector, a DJ. Um, I was, uh, was involved with a group called the 12 Tribes of Israel. Um, I went, then, then as I looked further into that, I uh, realized that there were a lot, of, a, a lot of discrepancies. I was reading the Bible and I felt that most of what they did was, was following the Bible. Uh, but, but I felt that a lot of what they did was counter what was saying in the Bible. Um, such as the thing of, don't, not, there's no need to get married, we can just sleep with different women, have lots of babies everywhere, lots of picnic, and, um, you know, it didn't, to me that didn't seem like, it seemed to be counter to what Haley Selassie was about, which was he was married to one woman, uh, and he had one wife, and he had children, and he had a family, and he was an Orthodox Christian. And when I looked further and further into this, and, in, and, and looked more into the, his life, it seemed that he been, seemed to be uh, disturbed at the fact that people were worshipping him as God. And so as I was reading through the Bible, I couldn't find anywhere that where, it was, where it was saying that there was a, a, a concept of Trinity, and his name, Adi Selassie, meant Might of the Trinity in Amharic. And, uh, and um, I was it was a try. Then I started to try to look at that as well. In fact, it means that he's the 225th descendant of the Queen of Sheba and King Solomon. So therefore, uh, th therefore he's just a representative. And in Orthodox, Coptic Orthodox Christianity, 
the emperor is the is regarded as an em as 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 a Christ-like character, mm. um, uh, uh, the, uh, something like a pope, but uh, with, the, with the ability to give forward decree laws and that in the name of God, if you like. So I started looking at looking at that that possibility. But the more and more I looked at it, I thought the Rastafarian people that I knew, and I've got nothing, I, I, I love them, the beautiful people as far as, you know, uh, I know that in, yeah, you know, uh, no disrespect to them because I think that a lot of them are sincere uh, and I actually think that their knowledge of the, of the scriptures seems to be a lot better than what a lot, most of the Christian groups seem to have. But um, I feel that and, and, and there was a lot of brothers I do have a lot of respect for that were trying to live there, but most of them, I felt, it seemed to be a cultural thing that they were into. And I believe that a lot of it was about people who were in... There was a lot of Afrocentricity, which I can see with people in diaspora, yeah. that that would be attractive. And, and then there's a feeling of, of a need of identity. Sure. And I feel that, that that's why a lot of, a lot of people are it's anti against this white... Western Christian viewpoint yeah. and pro African Ethiopian yeah. Christianity. It's just that what I felt was there was a that what was saying in the Bible is that Jesus is not God. It doesn't say anywhere that Jesus is God. Jesus doesn't say worship me, and neither does Haley Selassie. Yeah. So as I was looking at these things, I thought, right. Now the more and more I look at actually what Haley Selassie was about, it doesn't seem to gel with the Rastafarians. The, the, and neither do the, Christi the Christians, they don't seem to gel with, the, with, with even what Jesus said. Mm. And as I was going along, going through this, this dilemma in my head about does the Trinity fit in? Is Haile Selassie God? Is he not God? Is he a Christ? Is he not Christ? Does he just represent Christ? Is he the king Christ in his kingly character? Who is he? What does he represent? He never said any of these things. All he said is it was of the lineage of David, Queen of Sheba and King Solomon, that he was on the throne of David and he was, mm. and he was called the Lion of Judah. Mm. Um, he doesn't say anywhere that he was divine and he says in fact that I'm not divine. As many Rastafarians have said, I'm not, um, uh, I'm a man, um, I'm not a god. Mm. And he, he says that, he says it quite clearly. Uh, and he, in fact, addresses the, the fact that Rusty, he, he was, con he was um, concerned that Rastafarians were worshipping him. Well, then, I, 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 along the way, I'd see things like Breaking Barriers on, on Channel 31, which was an, a, a Dower program. I saw Visions of Islam. I would come across the university. I was working for a group called the Wilderness Society at times, trying to get people to join up with the Wilderness Society to try to get them as a job, to try to get them to help save the environment, because I was also environmentally aware. I also, uh, I also uh, met some brothers when I was in Broome one time, who happened to be up there doing some dawa, and I, um, I, I met them and talked to them, and this was just after 9-11 incident. And I talked to them about uh, Islam, and in fact I was drunk at the time, and uh, and that actually led on to something else. As I, as I was going through, and I had all of these things of little bits of Islam coming in, and my faith in the Rastafari faith was reducing. I was well and truly in debt, and my life was at a rock bottom. And then I pulled out the Quran that a, bro that a friend of mine who I'd used to smoke pot with and read the Bible with had become a Muslim. He'd give me a Quran before he was going to Indonesia to be married. And I, he, I, I pulled out the Quran and I said to Allah, I said, all right, Allah, if this is the true, I know that you are true. I know there's only one God because I've believed that all my life. But if, 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 you, if this is the true path, if this is your true religion, if I read the Quran and I agree with it, as I'm going through it, then I'll become a Muslim. So as I was reading through the Quran, I was going, yes, yes, I agree with that, I agree with that, I agree with that. And when it came up to the point that I that that it said that drink that drinking alcohol is forbidden, I said, all right, if I give up drinking alcohol for a week, help me give up drinking alcohol. I know that you're true. I want you to help me give up alcohol. Um, within a week. I'd finish, I'd finish drinking alcohol, I'd finish smoking tobacco, and I'd finish smoking marijuana. In one all, week. One, all in one week. 
And before that, before I was a Muslim, or before actually, I was, I, at that stage, I suppose I was a Muslim, I just happened to say my Shahada, but I knew it was the truth. But before that, I, I'd been to AA and tried to get help with my alcoholism. Um, and actually, which had, which had built up from working in nightclubs as a DJ, the alcoholism, and, and becoming and feeling the Rastafari was not true. There's something wrong with it. It's not correct. It's um, and plus, people like Woody Benson going to jail for cocaine. Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, he was like my hero because he was a 12 tribes brother. And then I saw him going to jail, going to jail for trying cocaine and going. I just thought, oh, it's, it's this is no good, you know. Um, and um, so I, I so uh, so then I said so then I went to the masjid. Uh, so then what I started doing is looking for Muslims. Yeah, I, th I used to sit at the merchant cafe and I was looking for Muslims. After I, when I come to that point, I was looking for Muslims and uh, I used to see I was looking for brothers in because uh, uh, you know the picture you get on the on the in on on the media was sort of like if it was Osama bin Laden and people like that with beards and turbans and that's what the media display. So that's what I thought they looked like. So I was looking out for people with beards and stuff. Who so now I suppose and. Uh, I didn't see people like that. I, I, I was looking for them, but I saw lots of women with uh, hijab on. You'd see them walking around because there's a growing population here in, in Australia of, of, of Muslims. And, okay. and uh, anyway, I decided, well, if I can't find any Muslims, where do I go? So I thought I'll go to the only place I knew was Perth Mosque. So I walked up William Street and went to Perth Mosque. And it was Thursday afternoon and I walked around and, and I went there and I thought, right, if I get a good vibe from this place, I'll walk around, I'll walk around it like the Muslims walk around the Kaaba, I'll walk around the mosque, and if I get a good vibe from this place, I'll, I'll go inside and I'll, I'll find out about it. And I walked around, nothing happened. But by this stage, I was pretty interested in Islam because I knew there was something wrong with the Rastafari thing. I didn't believe Haile Selassie was God. I didn't believe that he was. I didn't believe that he had any divine connect, divine thing. If anything, I, I, I felt that well, he might, he may have a lineage going back to King Solomon and Queen of Sheba. I felt that that's, you know, who am I to question what the Ethiopians claim as their history? So that was my understanding there. Um, and uh, so, uh, and uh, if I was shown by God that that was the truth and it was the path, I was would have been willing to follow that. But I asked, but I asked, uh, but I was asking Allah, I was asking God to guide me, and that was one of the major things. I was asking Him to guide me in a direction which I've heard in a lot of reverts. Usually, is the question that they ask God. Yeah, I was wandering around the mosque and I didn't hear anything, and I found out since that's where people do voodoo. That's probably why where I was listening in. And anyway, <coughs> on the way home, I met a Kuwaiti brother. I met a Surah brother who looks like a Muslim. I walked up and said, are you a Muslim? He said, yes, I am. I said, oh, well, I don't, I, I, I'm reading the Bible. I'm a Bible reader. I don't believe that, and there's still the dreadlocks at that stage down to here and the rest. And uh, I said, I believe in the, I'm a Rasta and I believe in the Bible, but I don't, I don't believe that Jesus is God. I don't believe any man is God. And I'm, what I'm reading about Muhammad, I seem to think of him, I seem to think that he may be a prophet, because he definitely wasn't against God. And he said, I like what you hear. Here's some, I'll see if I can get in touch with someone to talk to you about this. Well, I never saw that brother. I didn't see that brother again until after I reverted. But anyway, the next week I thought, right, I want to go back and I haven't heard from him. I waited for him to call me. He never called me. And... Um, by that stage, I was still reading about the Quran. I was still watching this thing from uh, um, uh, watching a video of Khalid Yassin's Purpose of Life. I was watching that, um, and uh, and quite quite in, and watching some of his programs, and felt that I really like this brother, and I agree with what he's about. Um, went then then went to. Um, and this is when it was. Uh, I then went back to the mas uh, to the masjid, the next Perth mosque, the next the, the, the following Thursday to try to do it again. I saw two brothers standing outside, and I asked them about um, asked uh, asked them about um, 
um, Islam and they said why don't you come back tomorrow Friday now I didn't know this but Friday nights was the Tablik Jamir had their big nights on Friday at the masjid so there were lots of Muslims there um, and I went in there and uh, walked in met a brother an Indonesian brother and anyway they were uh, wondering what I was doing in there and I said, well, I suppose if I'm, and they asked me, what are you doing in, the, in here? What do, you want to, what do you want to do? I said, well, I suppose if I'm, if I, if I'm in a mosque, um, I suppose I want to be a Muslim. At first my, uh, my mother was shocked because I, I called my mother up and asked her permission to speak about this firstly because you should need to respect your mother. You've got to love your mother that's one of the things that's very important in Islam. And um, it, 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 she, she said that it, it shocked her. She was shocked at first. She was shocked at first. She was also a bit concerned about the issues because of what the media portrayed. Um, she wasn't happy about it. Um, since then, she's looked, investigated more, and looked into Islam, what it's about. Alhamdulillah. And uh, she's, uh, she, she's she, her viewpoint is that. Basically, all religions are the same, so I'm entitled not to my belief, and that the media portray a wrong, wrong understanding of what Islam is about. So, alhamdulillah, that is a uh, move forward. Uh, inshallah, maybe one day she'll become a Muslim. Uh, but, uh, you know, pray for that. Uh, and my, my other members of my family, some have accepted it, um, others have. Um, others have found it very difficult to deal with. Um, so, my, my, my father passed away a couple of years ago. He died a non-Muslim. Well, I, I don't know actually what, he, what, he, what his concepts were before he died. Um, so that had a big impact actually in me deciding and looking at what life's about because because death became a very real thing to me. Um, so it's that that is actually one of the most difficult things for a revert, I suppose, to deal with. Is once they realise that if they do realise that their family is not Muslim, that they may, you know, that they're not going to make it to Jannah. So, uh, so that's a that, that actually is a little bit of a touchy subject. It's a little bit sore, um, but uh, Alhamdulillah, they all have an intelligent brain. They've all got an ability, and it's Allah that gives hidayah, and uh, we can do as Dal. Say that, that to my mum that I love her very much, and that if she surely can see the changes that have happened in my life from being an alcoholic, smoking every day, ganja smoking every day person who was confused and lost and going through a horrible state in my in their life to me now, being a clear-minded person who has gone back to university, is doing a university degree and working and upholding a family as well, the change is like opposite, the change is like two different people, surely she could see that Islam is the truth, that God is, that Allah, that God Almighty, it is his path, it is his way, and that Islam is the solution, and that really God put us here on a purpose on, on earth for a purpose and his purpose is to worship him alone and these Christian churches that she's going to though the message of, of one God is there the idea of putting partners and making Jesus as part with God or a partner with God is actually something if she read in the Old Testament even in the Bible which I found was something that was forbidden and even in the New Testament, there's nowhere in it that says that Jesus is a, is a God or wanted him to be worshipped as such. And if these things, why follow something that's false? 
because it suits you, because she grew up as a Catholic. Why follow this tradition? When you know something's wrong, why don't you go for that which is right? So I pray that she does that. And I hope that she does that. Inshallah, she'll do that. That she'll see through my life, and I hope that she sees through my life, through the changes in my life, that Islam is a solution, not only just for each an individual, but for humanity, for them, and for the whole planet. Jiba